terror attacks in Kenya. Is al-Qaeda responsible? And will the U.S. government be shut down as some Republicans scramble to defund Obamacare? Those stories and more are on Today at Chat State. Hello, Chet State. I'm Andrew Cavett. And I'm Derek Dameron. So, you're a non-traditional student here. I am. I have been out of college for about 25 years now. I'm going back to school full-time, working full-time, and really enjoying it. Wow. That's enough to make anybody lose their hair. Sadly, more news of terror this week. Kenyan security court forces are still going through an upscale mall in Nairobi defusing explosives. Authorities say they are in control of the shopping center, but explosions and sporadic gunfire were heard this morning. And more questions remain as to whether there are still hostages inside. It has been four days since Al-Shabaab militants burst into the mall and opened fire. Reports say Al-Shabaab is threatening more attacks if Kenyan troops don't pull out of Somalia immediately. A spokesman for the organization said, quote, you should expect black days. Do you think there's any correlation between what happened in Kenya and what happened to the Washington Navy Yard last week? Uh, you know, just at a glance, it doesn't really appear to be. It seems that the, everything going on in Kenya is being put on by a specific group with a specific agenda, whereas um, what happened in Washington was more um, spontaneous and unplanned. So I don't really think so. No. You probably are right. The Republican Party and the U.S. economy could be on cruise control for the next few days. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas is sounding the call to fellow Republicans to reject Obamacare, setting up a political showdown that could shut down the U.S. government. He spoke with Dana Bash. The way Ted Cruz sees it, Obamacare is a disaster. He's simply keeping a campaign promise. Do whatever it takes to destroy Obamacare. That should be our priorities, not simply continuing business as usual in Washington. Cruz's scorched earth strategy, tying defunding Obamacare to a must-pass spending bill, is inflaming many fellow Republicans who think if this causes a government shutdown, they're going to get burned. Republican Peter King called him a fraud. The issues are too important, they're too serious to require real conservative solutions, not, not cheap uh, headline hunting uh, schemes. In the Democratic-led Senate, the votes are not there. Mr. Cruz, no. And some of Cruz's Republican colleagues are so miffed, it has gotten really personal. Bob Corker tweeted, I didn't go to Harvard or Princeton, the schools Cruz graduated from, but I can count. They don't like what you're doing. They don't like what you're putting them through. These are fellow Republicans. Well, you know, individual politicians can choose to say whatever they want. They can launch whatever personal insults they want. I would note in the House that the Republicans, including those who have criticized me, voted to defund Obamacare. And in the Senate, I think the votes are very fluid. To be sure, among many grassroots conservatives, Cruz is a hero. But in the Senate, run on relationships, he's rubbed GOP veterans the wrong way. John McCain called him a wacko bird, and not Cruz is now embracing. If they want to insult me, they can knock themselves out. My focus is on the substance, on stopping Obamacare. Why? Because it's hurting the American people. Now he's warning Senate Republicans support his filibuster. Any senator who votes for cloture on this bill is voting to give Harry Reid the authority to fund Obamacare with just 51 votes. Dana Bash, CNN, Capitol Hill. Jason Dorsey, the self-appointed Gen Y guy, visited Chattanooga State to discuss crossing the generational divide between traditionalists, age 68 and over, baby boomers, aged 49 to 67, Generation X, ages 37 to 48, Generation Y, ages 18 to 36, and Generation I, ages 17 and under. According to Dorsey, this is the first time there are four generations in the workforce and five generations in the marketplace. Chattanooga celebrated its sixth year as a part of International Parking Day last Friday. Nathan Gale has more. Uh, my name is Eric Eugene Smith, and today is parking day um, in which you're supposed to turn a parking space into your ideal park. So, um, obviously, my ideal park would be a blacksmith shop. Um, 
and it's just been nice to be outside and be in front of people today. Uh, you know, Chattanooga has a really rich uh, history of metalworking. It's kind of been forgotten. I don't know if that was done on purpose or not, but uh, people have forgot about how how much you know metal working used to happen here, and it's just good to be out and you know expose you know the old blacksmithing skills to people and and uh, you know show people what's up. Free Fest out here at Parking Day in Chattanooga. We've been out here for a few hours now and Parking Day is all about occupying a space and making it your own little park. So our park is hula hoops and cornhole and a boombox. And we are promoting Imix Music Group, we're promoting Track 29's upcoming events, and we are promoting Fly Free Fest. Now Fly Free Fest is a first annual music and arts festival that me and my husband Corey, I'm Colleen Keo Petrie, that we are putting on. It's in Adams, Tennessee. It's about 20 to 30 minutes past Nashville towards the Kentucky side. And it takes place October 11th through 13th. We've got 40 plus bands and we've got aerials. We're gonna have fire performers. We're gonna have sustainability um, workshops. We're gonna have belly dance workshops. We're gonna have yoga in the morning. We're gonna have food trucks and art vendors. We are going to be doing all kinds of activities. We're gonna have people canoeing on site. Our venue is Red River Canoe campgrounds and people can canoe during the day and float down the river and end up at our festival grounds. It's going to be a musical extravaganza. We're going to be camping on the site there and there's RV camping and primitive car side camping. We're going to have live painters and installation work and uh, we're going to have a, somebody building a dome on site where they're going to do workshops on sustainability and energy. And that's about it. <laughs> My name's Kate Warren and I'm with a nonprofit organization called Art 120 and it's all about awareness, reaching and teaching through art and connecting our vibrant arts community with those from within a 120 mile radius. Uh, we do that with three events. We do that with uh, Art Car Parade. We do that with um, in-school field trips to schools that don't have any art and then we do that with our urban art bike building workshops which you can see we have an art bike park set up for International Parking Day which is what this is all about. There's me and several other organizations and just people who wanted to turn a metered space into their ideal idea of a park for the day. Uh, this is uh, the Parking Day uh, that is a national event um, started a few years ago in San Francisco and we're just now out here trying to represent UTC in the engineering department, uh, promote it. And we've got an earthquake table here and then some density experiments and we'll be glad to show you. Well, let's take a quick look at the weather. Here's Steven. It will be partly cloudy this weekend with highs in the upper 70s, then rain on Monday, followed by more partly cloudy weather with colder temperatures next week. It's that time of year when you can't tell if you should wear short sleeves or long. I suggest layering. Back to you. Thanks, Steven. Well, that's it for today at Chat State. Be sure to check us out online and on cable, Comcast Cable 3. Thanks for watching.